I'll be back, but I'm going to hand you over now to Tad and to Patrick, really to make the keynote opening speeches. Tad and Patrick. Yes, thank you. Yeah. You need to use that microphone. Oh, thank you. Yes, otherwise they won't hear you. Well, I'll do my best. Well, I'm not going to attempt to emulate uh, Francis in welcoming you. I think you did a great job. Thank you very much, Francis. What I am going to do, and I'm going to be short about it, is uh, because I know we all want to hear our keynote speaker, um, I'm going to ask our board to stand and be recognised because we've got a wonderful council and I'd like to all to see them. I'm not going to name them. Stand up, you all know each other. And, and turn round and take a bow. Um, it, it, it's my very pleasant to introduce a new member onto the board, Andrew Scott. And, Andrew, could you stand up? And uh, maybe there's a few people who don't know you. And Andrew will be replacing uh, Oza, who uh, has been seven years on the board, and I think that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> I have to say I, I thoroughly enjoyed uh, my well uh, the seven years that also has been on the on the council. I first met her, some of you might remember, uh, in in Berlin when we were doing uh, two or three days training, and I thought, mm, I think that person's council material. Uh, she went on to do an extremely good job, and uh, I've had some amazing times with her when we've gone and done things, uh, travelled quite a lot. And um, also, I also had the privilege of meeting, meeting her husband, Lars, who spent his life saying, Tad, I have a question. <laughs> I can't answer his questions necessarily, but there we go. Anyway, I would really like to thank you and say what a privilege it has been to have spent so much time with you. One thing which is, is absolutely amazing is the rate of growth of EURA in terms of members. Uh, last year, at the beginning of last year, we reached uh, a, a milestone of 400 members. Um, by the time we had the uh, uh, conference last year, the number of members had increased to about 425. This year, we're up to 475, so in a space of less than 15 months, that our membership has increased by 20%, which is absolutely remarkable. And I, I, I tend to believe that it has something to do with the fact that it's very easy to join. You go to the website, you click join. Of course, you could think something else. We're obviously doing something right, so people want to come and be part of the, uh, the Euro family. Um, we have a quick breakdown of our, our various different types of members. This, the percentages change from year to year, and in fact, uh, the number of full members has actually slightly decreased um, in the last 12 months because we've seen a, an increase in the number of affiliate members, who are those companies offering services uh, useful to uh, members and or their clients, and also uh, an increase in worldwide members. And it's particularly important to say how uh, pleased we are that we have more and more people joining us from throughout the world. We've had a, a real boom in the number of people uh, joining from South America uh, and indeed Asia. I now hand over to Patrick who's got a few words to say about the Global Quality Seal. The Global Quality Seal, the Global Quality Seal. Um, it really is going from strength to strength. Uh, our annual review took place um, at the end of last year. Uh, as is customary, we include a member of the uh, one of the RMC companies on our annual review, and this time we were very pleased to have uh, Lisa Reed from Cartus, and we'd like to thank Cartus for releasing her to help uh, us with our annual review, and her input was very valuable. Thank you very much. We have 62. <laughs> we have 62 Euro 
Global Quality Seal certified members in over 30 plus countries. Um, it's, it's interesting that uh, it's in over 30 plus countries. The countries outside um, Europe are really appreciating the value of the Global Quality Seal and uh, are taking it up in greater numbers and uh, that's very pleasing to see because it's the one true global standard for uh, delivery of our services. We have 39 members awaiting certification and that's the highest number uh, we've ever had. So it really is going from strength to strength. And for full details, those of you who haven't got the Global Quality Seal yet, for full details of how to go ahead and get certified, please contact Maria in the office, Maria Manley, and uh, she'll set you on the right course. I would, I would add to that that Martina Sharvai, who wrote the standard in the, in the first place, has a standout here um, in the exhibition hall, as do DQS and SGS, who are the uh, people who carry out the audit. So no excuse, you can go and talk to them uh, at some point over the next day or so. Training. Ah. Uh, we, uh, obviously, Euro has a number of different training programs, but one of our most innovative is the OBU online coaching. Uh, we have now managed to run programs A to D uh, over a two and a half year period and delivered uh, modules one to 12. There are three modules per program. We've had 155 participants and at this very moment, program D is online. Programs A, B and C uh, will be delivered again over the next 12 months and will obviously be followed by program uh, D. In terms of the MIM, uh, we have 36 members who actually qualified uh, for the MIM. Uh, two modules have now been successfully delivered online and the uh, uh, MIM programme has actually been delivered in-house for companies uh, uh, for four different members and there are further two different members uh, who are planning to do so. Effectively, if you have enough employees, we can bring the training to you, um, which saves you obviously money uh, in terms of travel, etc, etc, etc. Uh, and a reminder to those who are a GMS uh, uh, designated with the WERC, uh, you only actually need to take day three excellence in service delivery in order to qualify for the MIM. And the global uh, index, the Euro index, is um, still the only reliable barometer of how our industry is uh, progressing. Uh, thanks to Helmut Berg for uh, setting it up in the first place and for keeping it going. We actually have um, 279 members in, our, uh, in, our, in, in Europe who, are, who could contribute to this. Unfortunately, only 79 of them are regular contributors, so we're, uh, we're really appealing to you at, on this occasion to, uh, to take the... Um, to in, input your, your contribution to the Global Index every uh, month. We have extended, however, the Global Index for input by the RMCs and by our worldwide members, and they have taken it up, and this is making the Global Index a lot more relevant and worldwide. And uh, again, thanks, Helen. Well, here we've got a, a graph which actually only shows the, uh, the Euro index dating back to December 2009 right through to February 2014. So you can see the way uh, uh, people's opinions have gone up and down. The, obviously the only really considerable down was in March 2010. Um, and that was strangely just prior to the conference, the first conference in Palma which was cancelled as a result of the um, earthquake. <laughs> That's a very strange coincidence there. <laughs> oh, no, no, sorry. Volcano, I beg your pardon. Oh, sorry, I'm thinking, I'm, hopefully I'm not thinking ahead. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Yes, we're continuing, we're continuing our dialogue with the RMCs. The um, Euro held two summit meetings with the RMCs last year. Uh, and we're going to continue the uh, twice a year meeting. Uh, these are progressing very well and um, they're highly productive discussions. The, 
The RMC's rep, all RMC representatives, as I mentioned, take part in the Global Quality uh, re uh, Seal Review, and this is very, very valuable. Helps us to uh, match the KPIs in our quality seal to their demands uh, of, of the RFPs of their clients. So um, there's been genuine interest and uh, very active discussion over the uh, DSP issues. We had a, a, a very exciting, for me anyway, um, uh, session earlier on today in the conference which uh, where we got to express um, DSP anxieties which were very, very comprehensively answered by the um, RMCs who were there and um, thank you very much uh, those of you who were there for that. So there is a strong dialogue which is building a real partnership for the better of our, our, our business together. So thank you there for that. The hot topic this year, of course, has been compliance. And um, we've worked as, um, as, as Euro, we've worked as, with the RMCs to simplify this. And we're making the reviews of the global quality seal match uh, what they require, so that those of you who have it find it easier to comply. Uh, yes, of course, another thing that we strive to do is to have a dialogue with our industry partners. Um, I represented uh, Euro at the Omni Conference for the first time last year in Monaco. I have never been to a more expensive place in my life. <laughs> I tried to find wine on the wine list that was less than three figures. I did succeed, just. Uh, we, uh, we, uh, both Dominic and I both uh, um, attended the annual uh, uh, US uh, WRC uh, in Dallas last year and we had one of our uh, cocktail parties in the evening, Euro reception, and we actually attracted record numbers. Um, we will be uh, attending ELC again in Chicago this year and on the 9th of October in the Renaissance Hotel um, Chicago, where we were about four or five years ago, we will be holding our reception this year. Uh, we are also going to be exhibiting at the CERC, Canadian Employee Relocation Council's uh, conference in Whistler, uh, uh, just outside Vancouver, uh, between the, in, in, towards the end of September. And um, for the future, we're going to expand uh, the research initiatives. Um, Dominic particularly is, is working on this and uh, we're going to increase the developments in distance learning, the OBU programs and all of the other um, programs are, um, will be increased. The, the membership and conference fees will remain the same though, which uh, is, is a great achievement and um, that's partly down to you because you're attending the conference in greater numbers and the more that are here, the better it is to share the cost and keep the fees the way they are. So thank you all again for coming. And um, keeping the fees the same will, will, will be a, a good thank you as well. The, any profits we make, and we'll make a profit this year, they're, pro they're ploughed back into, uh, into our projects for the members. The, um, the organisation is non-profit making, so everything, everything that's made is ploughed back. The RMC DSP Forum, as I said, uh, will be reconvened in the autumn of uh, 2014, and further upgrades to the Euro Web Portal over the summer uh, will take place. And um, last but not least, Euro is working with the Turn Group to develop professional indemnity insurance. This has been um, very evident in, in uh, recent demands from the membership. It didn't exist before. There was, there was never a specialised package. We have developed it along with the Turner Group. Paul Coleman uh, has been great in his assistance to us and has a stand outside in the exhibition hall, which I, I uh, encourage everybody to go and see and talk to him about it and uh, familiarise yourself with the application form what's required and what's available. So um, he has virtual global uh, coverage. The place is excluded. You can read on the slide there. Um, 
but the main places are covered and it's a wonderful cover. We hope to approve it at the next uh, council meeting, which will be next month, and then roll it out over the rest of the year. So that's, that's what we've done. And um, 